Today I'm going to show you guys how to crochet this cozy slouchy hat. Um, all you will need to make this is one skein of Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick yarn or another similar yarn. This is a super bulky weight yarn. It's 6 ounces, 170 grams, 106 yards, 97 meters. And this is the color fairy. So I was able to make the largest size and do an extra large palm with one skein of yarn. Um, you are going to want to grab an 11.5 millimeter crochet hook or size P crochet hook. You're going to want to print out the pattern on my website or you can just follow along. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to need a size P or 11.5 millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need one skein of Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick yarn. One skein has 6 ounces, 170 grams, 106 yards, 97 meters. And this is considered a super bulky weight yarn. Um, and this is the color Fairy. And you can use a pom-pom maker if you'd like to make a pom-pom, or you can also just use your hand. All right, so let's get started. I am making the adult, medium, or large size. So there are four sizes written, and I've got baby size, toddler size, child, adult, small, or an adult, medium, large. This is pretty forgiving. Um, you can always increase the length if you want it to be a little slouchier. You can always go larger and do a few extra rows if you'd like. But um, if you're following along in the pattern, the baby is the first size, toddler is the second size listed, child, adult, small is the third size, and adult, medium, large is the fourth size. So when you see four numbers written next to each other, you just follow along with the size that you're doing. All right, to get started, I am going to make a slip knot. And I am going to chain 18 for my size. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, okay, so I've got eighteen chained and now our hat will be worked back and forth vertically here okay so now we are going to hdc half double crochet in the second chain from the hook so this is the first chain this is the second chain and to do a half double crochet you yarn over first you insert your hook we're gonna we're gonna be working in this ridge that comes up here so you yarn over insert the chain in the second Insert your hook in the second chain from the hook. You yarn over again, pull up one loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops, or I'm sorry, pull through three loops. Okay, so here we go again. Yarn over, insert your hook in that loop. Yarn over, pull up one hook. Yarn over, pull through all three. And then we're just gonna continue this all the way across. All right, and when you're near the end, you're going to make sure you want to get that last, we've got two ridges left. You want to make sure you get both of those. You're working in both of those. And then we're going to stop and the pattern says to make sure that you have 17 half double crochets or 16 if you're making the next size, 15 if you're making the size before that, and 14 if you're making the size before that. So we're going to count this first space here. Basically you want to count the V's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 half double crochet spaces, okay? So now we're just going to chain one kind of loosely. Make sure this is a little loose here. Chain one and then now we turn the work. And we're going to half double crochet in the back loop of the very first space, HDC space, and in each space across. 
going through both loops at the end. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna yarn over and go in the back loop. See how there's two loops here on the top? We're just gonna insert our hook in the back loop. Yarn over, pull through one, pull up one loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And so we're just gonna be working in that back loop all the way across. And you can see you'll start to see you'll start to see that V form. And then once we get to that last space, we're going to want to go in through both instead of just going through the back we're gonna to wanna to be going through both of those loops at the end. That just creates a little bit sturdier of an edge. So I'll show you. So we've got two spaces left. So we're gonna go in the back loop of this one. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna yarn over, but we're gonna go through both of those spaces at the end here. And you'll see this just helps to create a pretty sturdy edge. All right, so we're gonna chain one loosely and turn, and we're gonna keep repeating this. So we have two rows done, one, two. Okay, and we're going to, the pattern says, let me just reference the size here, we continue this for, so that we have 22 rows total for the size that I'm making. So you just yarn over, and again, you work in that space that's closest to the hook there and you do an HDC there and then when you get to that last space at the end you'll be going through both loops. So I've got two spaces left on this row. I'm going to go in the back loop for the next one and then I'm going to make sure I go through both of those spaces in the next, in the last one. Okay. And then you just chain one loosely, turn, and start the same thing again. So I am on my fourth row here. So I will meet you back here once I am nearing the end of my 22nd row. So just reference how many rows you're supposed to do based on your size and um, I will show you how to seam it and finish it off in a little bit. And one thing I just want to note, just keep track and make sure you have the same amount of um, DC, HDC spaces. Um, as you keep going, sometimes you can, you know, start <laughs> adding stitches by accident. So just double check your work every couple rows and make sure you have the correct amount of HDC spaces um, as you keep going. Okay, I am on my 22nd row. I'm going to finish this row. I just wanted to show you what it's looking like. I'm going to still just do that HDC in both loops for the last stitch there. Okay, so I have 22 rows. You can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, so we just finished this. We're going to chain one. Now we're going to turn the work. We're going to fold it in half so that the work that we just did is closest towards us and the beginning row is the farthest away okay 
Now we are going to slip stitch all the way across to seam up the hat. This is a good time to check the width of your hat. If you want to add or decrease rows, you need to do it in multiples of two. So your work ends up looking similarly. Okay, so now we are going to slip stitch this up by inserting our hook in the loop closest to us in the row um, that is closest to us. And we are going to go through the back loop of the work of the row that is farthest away from us. Okay. I'm going to move the yarn to the back so I can do this slip stitch here. But we are gonna go through both of the loops we just went through and that chain one, okay? So I go through that front stitch on in the row towards me. I go through that back loop in the row away and I just slip stitch through. Okay. And just be sure you're working evenly. You're going in the same stitch in the row in front of you and the same stitch in the row in the back and then you just pull through and slip stitch. So this seams it up in a way um, that looks, you know, similar to the rest of the work. Okay, so we go through that front loop, go through that back loop, and you slip stitch it. So work all the way across, and I'll show you what to do when you get to the end. All right, I've got a few more stitches to seam up here towards the end. And then, then what we're going to do is um, I, through this last one, I'm going to kind of go through um, the end here. Okay, so slip stitched, we've slip stitched all the way to the end here. We're going to cut a pretty long tail, I don't know, maybe 24 inches or so. It doesn't need, even need to be that long. But um, now you're simply going to just pull this through. I had a, a loop, an extra loop in there. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to close up the top of the hat by weaving this tail through the V's at the top, okay? So, you take your crochet hook and you're simply going to go through the top of the V's with your hook and pull this yarn through. And this just weaves it through each V at the top and it'll close it up nicely. Make sure you're at that top stitch, that top V. And you just start pulling it through. I'll show you a little bit more closely so you can see that V. The very topmost V. You just insert your hook and just weave that through all the way across. And this will be what closes up the top of the hat. And it just looks nice when you've got those V's all lined up at the top. All right, 
So I'm working my way around here to the beginning. And then we're going to weave it kind of back through, bring it back through that original V so it closes up nicely. Almost there. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning. So I am going to kind of go through, this isn't necessarily the cleanest V here, but that's kind of where I seamed everything up. So I go through that. And then you pull the top, you pull it all together at the top. And that's when your hat really comes together. So what I like to do at this point is weave, um, kind of bring that yarn through the top and um, then what you can do is pull everything back on the inside and then I kind of turn it inside out. And this is when you can really pull and tie everything together. Okay, so really pull that top together. And then you can tie a knot. And I would leave some strands to attach your pom-pom. And secure it a little bit more later. So you've got the hat part complete. And now it's time to do your pom-pom. So I like to use my Clover Extra Large pom-pom maker to make poms. Um, I like the extra large. I like using pom-pom makers just because it creates a little bit more of an even look. If you don't have one, it's fine. You can wrap the yarn around your hand and the pattern kind of explains how to do this if you wanna just use your hand. Um, so that's always an option too, but if you wanna use a pom-pom maker, I'll just show you how I make my pom-poms. Um, I'm left-handed, so I kind of do this maybe a little bit backwards than some of you guys. But basically, you open up the pom-pom maker and just start wrapping yarn around. There's lots of different ways to make poms. Um, this is one of them. Some people use like cardboard to do this. Like I said, you can just use your hand. I just like the look of the pom-pom maker. So you just wrap this all the way around. You start on this end because you want to end on this end over here, the one that closes, because you have to keep going over here. So I will show you how to do this. You wanna make sure it's pretty thick on here if you want a full pom-pom. All right, so I just um, finished wrapping the yarn around there. I close it, attach it here, open this side up, and then you just continue wrapping the yarn around. Easier said than done. All right, so when you finish wrapping the yarn around the end over here, you close it all up and you can cut a tail here. And then you take a sharp pair of scissors Make sure this stays shut. You start just cutting. You keep your scissors um, kind of in the center here, this guide. And you just snip the yarn all the way over, all the way across here. All right, so once you've finished cutting, you take a piece of yarn and you wrap it through the center here, and you're gonna tie a knot. And this is what secures all of the yarn pieces. So make sure this is really tight. 
tight as you can make it without breaking the yarn. If you're using like 100% wool, I suggest using a different kind of yarn to secure the center because um, it can rip easily if you pull it too tight. So sometimes I do like two knots here just to make sure it's really secure. And then you can remove the pom-pom maker. And they kind of, I usually take these pieces off and then they just come apart. So that is how to make a yarn pom-pom. And then you can take your scissors and trim any extra little pieces that are sticking up to make it even more perfect, but it usually ends up pretty good with the pom-pom maker. So now you take your hat and your palm and you take the string from your pom-pom and weave it through the top here on either side. So take one strand and go through one side of the hat and take the other strand and go through the other side of the hat and then you can tie a knot. And then you can just pull this through. So you've got all of these pieces on the inside here. And I usually just kind of spread the pieces apart, figure out what's coming in where, and just knot the inside pretty securely. Get that palm in there pretty tight. And there you go. And then you can just snip the end. When you're done, and you've completed your hat. One thing I wanted to note, I have a pretty big head, so this size, this adult, medium, or large fits me perfectly. But if you wanted to tighten up the bottom, you could do a slip stitch um, around the edge here to clean it up and tighten it up if you need that um, for your hat. And what's great is you can just add that on in the end if you need it.